Hi everyone, this video is going to teach you everything you need to know about tile maps in Godot 4.3. So let's get started. So if I want to make a tile map, I simply have to go to right click and add a child node and select the new tile map layer node. After clicking create, I can go on and configure my tile map by going to the tile set and adding a new tile set. This tile set is going to contain all the images and the information that we need to provide for our tile map in order to be able to draw on the screen. So if I click on the tile set, I can specify the tile size, which is the size of a singular tile. And I'm going to say it's 18 by 18 because that's how big my tiles are. Now, if I go to the tile set tab, I can add here an atlas, which basically is a collection of a bunch of tiles. So if I select tilemap.png, you see that I have this atlas added here. Now, you might notice that the atlas grid is not perfectly aligned to my tile map. And this happens because I have a separation between these tiles. You see here I have one pixel and here at the bottom I have another pixel. I can fix that by going to the properties of this atlas and increasing separation on the X and on the Y axis. And now you see that everything is separated properly. Now, what if for any reason we didn't have access to the complete tile map? For example, maybe we only have access to the individual tiles. Well, in that case, we can select them all by clicking on the first one and then holding shift and clicking on the last one and dragging them to this atlas region. Now for each of these tiles, an atlas has been created, but we don't really want that. We want all of them to be in the same place. So we are going to go to the dot 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 here to open the atlas merging tool. With this tool, we can select all the tiles that we want to combine in a singular atlas. So I could select the last one and move up and hold shift while selecting the first one. And I have selected all the tiles that are individual. Now what I can do is change this next line after column setting until we get a preview that looks kind of nice. I think 20 looks just about right and is very similar to the initial setup of our tile map. And if we click merge right now, we can save it under any kind of name. I'm going to say atlas2. And if I click on it, you see that it is perfectly aligned and it doesn't even have the one pixel spacing between tiles. Okay, but now that we know how to set up everything, let's see how we can actually use our tile map. So if I go back to the tile map tab, you'll see that now I can select one tile and I have a few tools which I can use in order to draw that tile. So the first tool is simply the paint tool, which allows me to paint in any shape I really want. Now, maybe if I want to be more precise, I could be using the line tool, which allows me to paint in a straight line. And even more, if I wanted to fill, let's say, a rectangular region, I'm using the rect tool. Now, each one of these tools has two additional modes. The first mode is called the picker, and this allows us to basically pick any tile that's already drawn on our tile map. So if, for example, we had, let's say, these yellow blocks and on top of those yellow blocks, maybe we had some coins or anything. We now have a pretty complex setup and we don't want to go and search through our tile map every time. What we can do is take the picker and say, OK, now I want the grass blocks and we draw grass again. I take the picker again. I want the coins. I draw coins again. And another cool feature is that the picker can select multiple elements at once. So for example, if I were to take this whole section because I liked it, you see I took the whole section and now this is my new brush, which I'm using to maybe create my level. Now, the other mode that we have is the eraser mode. And as you might expect, it allows us to erase tiles that we click on. So if I click on these tiles, you see I can erase and again I can erase and so on. What's interesting though is that I can also use the line tool to erase in a straight line and I also can use the rectangle tool to erase a full rectangle. Now even though these tools are amazing, you can see that it's pretty cumbersome to draw something and then change the tool and draw again and change the tool again and that's why we should learn some shortcuts. And the easiest thing to do is to simply draw something by holding left click but if we want to draw in a straight line, we can hold shift and now you see we draw in a straight line. If we want to draw, however, in a rectangular shape, we can hold control and shift. 
Now, of course, the same applies for the eraser tool. It's just that instead of using left click, I am going to use right click. So with right click, you see that I am immediately erasing things. And if I hold shift, I am erasing things in a line. And if I hold control and shift, I am erasing things in a rectangular shape. And of course, if we only want to select some tiles that we have already drawn with the picker tool, we can do that by holding control and pressing left click. And then we only drag our mouse over the tiles that we want to select. And now you see we can draw the selected picked tiles. Now, our next tool is the bucket tool. The bucket tool paints over all adjacent tiles of the same type. So if, for example, we wanted to replace these grass blocks with snow blocks for some reason, we could click on the paint bucket tool and simply click on the tiles that we want to replace. And you see here that all tiles are now covered with snow and the same works on all other regions. But you see, instead of selecting each one of those separately, what we can do is disable this continuous option of the paint bucket tool. And now you see that all tiles of the same type are going to get replaced with the snow tile. Now, one really cool thing to notice is that we can select multiple of these tiles at the same time. And of course, by selecting them, we are going to be able to draw multiple tiles at the same time, but that's not the main power of this feature. The main power comes when selecting this place random tile option. With this, instead of placing all four tiles at once, we can now place one random tile. And this is very good for adding a lot of variety to our game. And it works also with the line tool and with the rectangle tool. And on top of that, if we click again on the randomization button here, we can set the scattering to be two or three or whatever. And the higher the scattering is, the rarer we are going to get this foliage here. So if, for example, I am going to undo everything here, you'll see that I can set the scattering to, let's say, five. And if I press enter now, I can draw a rectangle and I barely got one little tree here. If I draw another rectangle, you see that I don't get these trees as often. Okay, maybe I could set it to something like one to see if we get it more often. And of course, we got a bunch more little trees and cacti and grass blocks. Now, imagine for a second that we only had these pipes available here. If I wanted to draw vertical pipes, what could I do? Well, Godot has the rotation option for our tiles. So, as you can see, I can draw my pipes normally, but if I want, I can click on this rotate tile right, and you see that now I can draw the pipes vertically. And if I click on rotate left, again, I can draw them horizontally. Okay, maybe it's more visible on this corner pipe, but as you can see, this does not fit well in this corner. But additionally, on top of rotation, we can also flip tiles. So if I wanted, I could flip this horizontally with this button here, and I can also flip it vertically with this button here. And now I can happily connect the pipe. And of course, I could rotate two times and connect it again. Now, similarly to other tools, we also have shortcuts for rotating and flipping. Now, if for some reason you really like the way this pipe looks, or you want to just save it for later use, you can go to the Patterns tab, and after clicking the selection tool, you can select the pipe and you can simply drag and drop it to the patterns panel. This will save a pattern that you can later use to draw more pipes looking exactly like this. Additionally, what you can try is select everything and you can hit Ctrl C to copy. And if you click on the patterns panel, you can hit Ctrl V to paste. And again, we have the same pattern here. And if I want to use this pattern, I can simply click on the paint tool and you see now that I have my pipe, which I can draw as many times as I want. And I can even rotate and transform just as I would with any kind of tile of group of tiles. Now, what if we wanted to have a different theme for our levels? For example, if we wanted to have a dark theme, then maybe we need darker pipes. And for that, what could we do? We could, yeah, go to our painting or drawing tool and create darker pipes but we can also go to our tile set and create a tile alternative. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we right click on the tile that we want to create an alternative for, we can click on create an alternative tile and you see here that we have, yeah, an alternative tile for this. 
Now, if I go to this and I click on select here, I can change a few properties of my tile. One such property can be found under rendering and it's called modulate. Now with this modulate, I can basically change the color or maybe the lightness of my pipe. And let's say that maybe in a darker level, I would like something like this. I don't know. So now if I wanted to simply draw these darker pipes, I could simply go to my tile map and under alternative tiles, I select my tile and you can see that I'm drawing darker pipes and you're not limited to one alternative tile. You can click on plus and add as many alternative tiles as you want and change them however you want. Now, what is a better way of giving life to your game if not through animation? With Godot tile maps, we can even create animated tiles. So, for example, if we were to animate these waves, we would have to create a new atlas which contains that animation. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's just get our frames for the animation. So I'm getting this one and I'm also getting this one. Now, just as before, we can click on the three dots and we can open the atlas merging tool. With this open, we can now select the tiles that we want to animate and we can click on merge. Let's call this waves.png and set save. And now if we click on the waves.png, you see that we have our tiles here. Now, before moving on with our animation, what we have to do is to remove this last tile. And why do we do that? Well, we want this image to be considered as the second frame in the animation of our first tile. So now we can go to select and click on the first tile. And here you see that we have a few properties that we can configure for this, but mainly we can say how many columns our animation has. So for us, it's just two columns and we can say how fast the animation should be. So for example, I could say that the speed could be two to make it twice as fast. Now, if I add a new element, you will see that the newly added element is the other frame in the animation. And here I have additional ways of configuring how fast the animation is because I can specify comparatively how many seconds does each of these frames have. So for example, I could make this first frame last twice as much as the second frame if I wanted, just by saying here two instead of one. But I'm going to leave it to one just to see what happens. Okay. Now that we specify this, I can go to tile map and as you can see, I cannot select this to the right. I can select this one to the left and this is an animated tile. So if I place it on top of these other tiles, you see now that these animate. Now it might be quite bothersome to have these animations all in separate atlases, but what we can do is merge these atlases with the original tile map. And how will we do that? Well, again, with the Atlas merging tool. But now we can select these two and we can say simply merge. And let's just save it as atlasanim.png and save. And now you will see some funky stuff happening. And why is this happening? Well, because there is no longer a reference to the original Atlas. But what we can do is select the Atlas and go to tile map. And under here, you'll see that it says automatically replace tiles with proxies. And now after a few seconds, we replace every tile with what tiles we wanted. And now if we look in our Atlas, we also have among these other tiles, the animation, which we can add in any spot we want. Now, if you think tile maps are amazing, you still haven't seen the best of it yet. While using shortcuts and drawing patterns is efficient, there is nothing more efficient than having Godot automatically select the correct tiles. And how would we make that possible? For that, we would need to use terrain sets. With terrain sets, we can tell Godot which tile to place depending on what tiles are around that tile. And how do we tell that? Well, we can do that through peering bits. These bits specify what neighbors the current tile has. For example, we might want to draw this tile when there are no neighbors, so all the bits will be set to minus one. For this other tile, we want the grass neighbors to the left and to the right. And for the tree trunk, we want three neighbors to the top and to the bottom. Now, finally, we can even combine the rings. For example, this tile would be used when all around are leaves and there is a tree trunk below. Okay, now we can finally start creating our terrain sets. If we add an element here, you'll see that it has a mode and a list of terrains. Now this mode specifies the complexity of our terrain set and it matches corners and sides, which is the more complex one, but we could choose to only match corners or only match sides. But 
Let's just go with the more complex one and let's add a new terrain to it. Let's call this terrain snow because maybe we want to make the snow blocks there. And now the only thing we have to do is to actually paint this terrain to our tiles. So how do we do that? Well, we can go to our tile set and under here, if we go to the paint tab, we can select what we want to paint. We want to paint the terrains and in here, let's say we want to paint the terrain set zero and we want to paint snow. Now what we have to do is to select which tiles are going to represent snow. So I'm going to pick these tiles here. Now you see that we have this little square following our mouse. So now we can specify basically when we want our terrain to be drawn. So for example, if I were to go to this specific tile, I want it to be drawn when there is nothing around it. The center tile represents the current tile and around it I have nothing, so I'm just gonna leave it that way. For this one, we want to draw it when there is something to the right, so I'm just gonna draw something here as well. For this one, we want to draw it when there is something to the left and something to the right, and for this one, we want to draw it when there's something to the left. Now, the same applies here, but we can simply drag and drop and select everything because we already know the layout. And here, when do we want to draw this one? Well, when there is something above, something to the left, something to the right, something to the bottom, and you get the picture. So I'm just gonna quickly draw everything that's left here and connect these as well. And now we have created our first terrain set. Now, how do we use it? If we go now to our tile map, you will see here Now, it might happen that you will not be able to see this terrain set immediately. This happens because the tile map layer didn't refresh. So what you have to do is to simply go and select another node and come back to your tile map layer and everything should be fine. Now, if we select our snow, we can draw anything and it will look good. If I just click here, you see that I have a tile which has borders all around it. But if I draw a line, you'll see that I also have a tile which has borders all around it and looks great. I can also draw a square, for example, and this also looks amazing. Now, on top of this, you might notice that here we have a bunch of modes. And the first mode is going to be connect mode, which basically means that everything gets to be connected. So if I drew this, I can draw something in the middle and you see that it is connected. Now. If I select this other mode, which is the path mode, it only connects the blocks inside the same stroke. So you saw I connected these, but now if I were to draw again, you see that these are no longer connected. Now for cases in which the auto tiling doesn't work properly, you can select the individual tile and place it so that it looks the way you want. So for example, I can select this individual tile and put it here. I can also put it here and you see that the tiles are no longer connected. Now let us paint a few more terrains for our tree here. I'm going to add a new element and call it leaves. And I'm going to add another element and this time call it, I don't know, trunk. Okay, now let's make our leaves a bit of a pinkish color because we want to be able to see that on the color of the actual leaves. So let's just go back to our tile set and let's select the terrain set zero. And this time let's select leaves. And for the leaves, I'm going to select all these and I'm going to draw in the same way as we did before. Okay, and now let's move on to our tree trunk. And for the tree trunk, I'm going to select basically everything here. For this one, I have something at the top, something at the bottom and something to the right. Do not get yourself fooled by this uh, sprite drawing here that might look like it's at the top right corner, this is actually just connected to another sprite that is on the right. So it's good to set it like this. For this one, we connect to the left. For this one, we connect to the right. We draw a line here, connect to the right. We draw another line here. For this one, we make a plus because it has something to the left and something to the right. Here, just a straight line. Same here, a straight line here and one more to the left. Okay, but what do we do with this one? This is definitely a trunk and it has a tree trunk above as well. But what does it have below? Well, since the below part is closer to the root of the tree, it means that this part is going to be on the ground, right? So what we can do is select the snow and put it right below. So whenever we have a tile that has wood above and ground below, it means that it's going to be this tile. Now, finally, maybe this should have been for the leaves 
And when do we have these leaves? Well, we have these leaves when there are leaves all around and when also there is a trunk below in a similar fashion to what we did here. Okay, now let us draw and see if our tree works. So I'm gonna go back to my tile map, to the terrains, and again, you see that they are not loaded, but if I click on the main and again on the tile map layer, they loaded and we have here some ground. So let's say that we want to draw a trunk for this. So you see, I lifted up the trunk and it already drew the root close to the ground. Okay, what if I draw something to the right? Oh, you see, it's a branch and this is very nice. And you might see that randomly, we either have a branch that has patches of leaves or we have a branch that doesn't have patches of leaves. Now, why does that happen? If we look on our tile set, we see that these branches have exactly the same configuration. Now, for branches that have the same configuration, there is an equal probability that they will be drawn. However, we can change that if we go to probability and here, instead of one, we could say, for example, that we do not want the branch with leaves to happen as often. So we can create here a new property of probability 0.5, for example, and assign the 0.5 to this branch. Now, if I were to draw on this branch, you will see that I will more often get the version without leaves than the one with leaves. So if I go to tile map and select trunk here, I can click once, no leaves. Again, leaves, leaves, no leaves, no leaves, no leaves, no leaves, no leaves, and so on. Okay, now for the leaves, we can simply start drawing from here, for example, and we can make any kind of shape for our tree. Now, you see that for some reason, we didn't get this connection between the tree trunk and the leaves, but this is a great opportunity to showcase how this singular tile works. So if I clicked on this one, you see that now I drew whatever I initially wanted. Okay, so actually there was no problem. All that I had to do was to simply draw the leaves first and only afterwards draw the trunk. And now everything seems to be fine. Now, what if we wanted to make this scene more interesting by overlapping multiple tile maps? So for example, I might want to come here and draw some leaves on top of this branch, but as you can see, the, there is a problem. The branch just got disconnected. So how to avoid that? Well, if I want to draw something on top, I need a new layer. And in Godot 4.3, this is as simple as duplicating the current tile map layer. So if I come here and click the tile map layer, I can press Ctrl D to duplicate it. And this is going to be an exact copy of the previous layer. So I just have to now remove everything that's drawn on the second layer. And I see it a bit darker because that is simply not the point of focus because we are now on the other layer. If we wanted to focus again on the trees, we could go back to tile map layer number one. And this is basically Godot's way of telling us, hey, you are on this current layer. If we wanted to go back, we could of course click here on the tile map layer two, but there is also the option of clicking on these buttons, which help us navigate through the layers. So we can select the next layer and it also cycles through the layers, so if we select the next layer now, it's going to go to the top layer. Okay, but now that we are on the second layer, let's just come here and do what we wanted. Let's draw a bigger leaf here. And as you can see, we drew a bigger leaf and the branch is still connected. And if we want to see how the thing looks overall, we can select here all layers. And you see now that it looks pretty interesting. Now, one other thing to note is that we might want to change the ordering of our layers. So I could take the second layer and simply move it on top of the first layer. And now you can see that the leaf is drawn behind the branch of our tree. Okay, but we do not want that. So I'm going to move it back and it looks nice now. Now, let's say, for example, that we just migrated a project that has been on Godot 4.2 to Godot 4.3. If you are in Godot 4.2, you might already be using a tile map node. Now, there is a very, very simple way of transforming this tile map node into tile map layers. And to do that, we simply have to come to this toolkit here and select extract tile map layers as individual tile map layer nodes. If I click on this, you will see that this is no longer a tile map. This can be changed to anything. So maybe change it to node 2D. And we have the layers separated just as we would have had our initial tile map. 
Now, while tile maps might be beautiful, they also have to be useful. So, for example, if I run this project in which I have a character body 2D, you will see that my character is going to simply fall through the tile map. And this happens because I have no collisions set to my tile map. But how can I do that? Well, if I want to set collisions, I can go here and add a new physics layer. If I click on add element, I can set the collisions for this tile map. So, my character body is on layer 1 and interacts with anything that's on layer 2. So I'm going to simply take this tile map and set it on layer 2 and I will let it interact with anything that's on layer 1. Okay, but now we have to add these collisions to our tiles that we want to collide with. So how do we do that? Well, I can go to tile set and here under the paint menu I can select a property and the property that I want is going to be the physics layer. Now you see here that I have these four dots that are connected and these dots basically create my collision shape. If I want to add a dot, I simply have to click on the edge of my shape. And if I want to remove a dot, you see that I have here a button which allows me to delete. And as you can see, I clicked here, 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 and now I have the full collision. Now, since my tiles are square, this is going to be very easy. I have this collision shape and I'm just going to click on the tiles that I want to collide with. So I'm going to click on this one, this one, and I can simply drag on all the tiles that I want to collide with. Now, if I were to want to collide with my tree, for example, I could add some collisions to these. Now, as you can see, this collision is not really fitting to the actual sprite. And if I want to remove whatever I have drawn here, I just have to remove my dots. So maybe let me just zoom out a bit. Okay. And if I remove all these dots, you will see that now I can draw this empty collision box on my sprite. Okay, but I do not want this empty collision shape. I would want a collision shape that resembles my tree trunk. And for that, you see that I can just draw my points in any way I want. And I can also drag them around just to make sure that they fit my shape. And I can now click on my tree trunk. And if I want, I could click on this one now and adjust the shape again. So let me adjust it like this. And you see, I drag the node here. Maybe I need another one. So I'll just put one here and another one here and another one here. Now it depends on how complex you want your collisions to be. You could make this much simpler anyway. Good. Now, if I want to try out my collisions, you will see that the character actually collides with the ground and with the tree trunk, and it doesn't collide with anything else that we haven't set yet. Additionally, what we can do is not only add physics layers, but add other types of layers. So for example, there are navigation layers, which basically tell our character where are the regions through which it can go through. We have custom data layers, which basically assign some custom data to our tiles. And we have rendering layers, which basically tell us if one element is going to occlude light or not. Now, the same principle applies for each one of those, except the custom data layers, which basically sets any kind of value we want and assigns it to one of our tiles. So for example, if I were to set an int and give it a name like, I don't know, some val, I could go here in my paint menu and select here the some val and just assign to it a number, something like 15. And now I could assign this 15 value to any of my tiles. So maybe, for example, these spikes would deal 15 damage. So I would assign 15 to them. Now, one more thing that I'd like to show you is that we are not only limited to adding images to our tile map. What we can also do is add a scene and place it anywhere we want and as many times we want in our tile map. So, for example, if I were to go to this plus icon here, you see that I do not have only the Atlas possibility, but I can also choose scenes collection. And if I choose that, Godot crashes. <laughs> okay, now if I choose that, you see that I can drag and drop here any scene I want. And what I have is a sign scene, which basically just tells you to subscribe to the channel, if, especially if you liked the video. And now I can go back to my tile map. So this tile map layer, I can select the tile map and in here, I can click on this sign and place it anywhere I want in my scene. And the functionality between signs is going to be replicated. So now if I save and if I press F5, you will see that 
I simply get this subscribe message every time I pass any of these signs and I didn't have to pollute my scene tree with a bunch of signs that basically do the same thing. Okay, now hope this was helpful and see you in the next one. Bye!